Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now answering question number five from the International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics 4 P4 June 2021 exam. And this question here is all about what's called implicit differentiation. Okay, now um, in this question, we have a curve with equation y squared equals y times e to the power of minus 2x minus 3x. We have to show that dy dx becomes 2y e to the power of minus 2x plus 3 times e to the power of minus 2x minus 2y. Okay, so to differentiate something like this, okay, I mean, in, in a normal kind of differentiation, you would make y the subject, so you'd have y equals some function of x, and then you would differentiate with respect to x, and then, you know, you'll have the terms which you can differentiate and so on. So the when you write, write y as some function of x, you'll have some sort of a way of writing, you know, y as a subject. In this case, it's not easy to write y as a subject because you've got two y terms. One of them is a squared term. One of them is not squared. So it's not easy for you to write this in terms of y in terms of x. So we use a technique called implicit differentiation. With implicit differentiation, basically, you, I mean, it goes back to the fundamentals of differentiation. And, you know, when you are actually differentiate, for example, y equals say x squared, what you're doing is you are differentiating both sides of this equation with respect to x. Like you do when you add, like when you have an equation like 3x plus 2 equals 5. What do you do to solve this? You subtract 2 from both sides of the equation and then you divide both sides of the equation by 3. So you do the same thing to one side of the equation that you do to the other. So when we're differentiating, it's very similar type of situation. We are differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x. So I'm differentiating y with respect to x, and I'm differentiating, I'll just write this up here to not confuse you, and I'm differentiating the 2x, the, the x squared, sorry, with respect to x. That's what I'm doing. Both sides being differentiated with respect to x. Now, when I differentiate y with respect to x, okay, that, that by definition is basically dy dx. Okay, that's what dy dx is, right? Um, and when I differentiate x squared with respect to x, I, you know, that because, as we know, that's 2x. Okay, so dy dx equals 2x. So that's what we're actually doing. It's like, you know, we normally just write this down, but this is what we're actually doing. So it's kind of a way of thinking that you... Uh, have to realize for you to understand what implicit differentiation is. So with implicit differentiation, what we do is we differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. So I'm going to differentiate this side with respect to x. And I'm going to differentiate the whole of this side with respect to x. Okay, now with differentiation, you can differentiate every term separately and that's fine just like when you differentiate for example 3x squared plus 2x minus 3 and you differentiate this you can differentiate each term separately so the same thing here we're going to differentiate each term separately okay so it's like saying i'm just going to leave it like this for now so that just for a reason so it's like saying we're differentiating all of this with respect to x so it's going to be this term with respect to x Okay, and we're going to differentiate this with respect to x. Okay, do you... Okay, so differentiate this with respect to x and this with respect to x. Now, okay, so what we have to do here, as I said, we don't have to write these two terms, these two, two lines down. This is just to try and make, hopefully, to make you understand what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm going to differentiate y squared with respect to x. Okay, so what we're going to do here is actually we're going to use what's called uh, the chain rule because y is a function of x all right so when if i differentiate something for example like if i have uh, 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 and i differentiate this with respect to x what i'm going to do here is i'm going to basically um, differentiate the thing as a whole so i'll say 3 times 2x plus 1 to the power of 2 so I differentiate the thing as a whole, and then I multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, and the differential of 2x plus 1 is 2. So I end up with 6 times 2x plus 1 to the power of 3. 
Okay, that's what happens when you differentiate something like this. So when you're differentiating y squared with respect to x, you differentiate the function as a whole, so it becomes 2y, and then you multiply that by the differential of what's inside this function. Now, inside this function is y. Okay, so the differential of y with respect to x is, by definition, dy dx. So basically, every time you have a y term that you're differentiating, you differentiate it as normal, like this is like 2y, and then you multiply by dy dx. That's what happens, basically. All right, and that's now I've got to differentiate this. Now, here we have a product of two separate terms. So we have to use the product rule here. Okay, so we have to use the product rule. I'll just use this space over here. So we have the first term, we're going to call it u. And the second term, we're going to call it v. Okay, so we're going to have the differential of u is the differential of y, which is basically dy dx by definition. And the differential of v, to differentiate this, now to differentiate an exponential like e to the power of 2 minus x, well, it stays exactly as it is. But then there's a function inside the function, so by the chain rule, we multiply by the differential of what's inside. So the differential of minus 2x is minus 2, so you multiply by minus 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, multiply this with this, and multiply that by that, and add them together. Okay, so I have e to the power of minus 2x times dy dx. Then I'm going to have plus, I'll have y times y times minus 2e to the power of minus 2x. Okay, so that's that differentiated. And the differential of 3x with respect to x is just 3. So that's minus 3. Okay, so now we can try to uh, simplify this. Um, okay, let's try and simplify this. We've got 2y. And we've got here <clears throat> dy dx equals e to the power of minus 2x times dy dx. And this is going to be minus 2 times y e to the power of minus 2x. And you got a minus 3. Okay, so we want to end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I can see that I have to bring the dy dx's on one side of the equation, the dy dx terms on one side, and everything else on the other side. Okay, so we can see here that if I bring the dy dx's on this side of the equation, all right, in which case I'll have e to the power of minus 2x dy dx minus 2y dy dx, then I'll get things in the right form because you see this, these, these two terms are positive here. On this side, they, those two terms are negative. If I, if I leave this side for those two terms, I'll have to add them to both sides. So I'll end up with 2y e to the power of minus 2x plus 3. Now I can see that dy dx is a common factor in both of these terms. So I can write it as dy dx times e to the power of minus 2x minus 2y. And here we have 2y e to the power of minus 2x plus 3. And finally, I can divide both sides. I can divide both sides by e to the power of minus 2x minus 2y. So I'm left with 2y e to the power of minus 2x plus 3 over e to the power of minus 2x minus 2y. And that's exactly what we had to show. Right, that's good. Now, if we had left this side for dy dx, we would have got the same thing, except we would have got um, minus... 2y e to the power of minus 2x minus 3 over 2y minus e to the power of minus 2x. And then we just have to multiply the top and bottom by minus 1. But seeing at this stage, at this stage, looking to see how they've expressed the answer, try and you know, put things on the side which causes it to be the same format. That just makes life a bit easier for you. And there's the answer to part A. So we can be pretty, rest assured that we've done it right because we've shown exactly what we had to show. Everything's the same. So that's the answer to part A. Now for part B. It says the curve crosses the y-axis at the origin and at the point P. Okay, it crosses at the origin and at the point P. It says the tangent to the curve at the origin and the tangent to the curve at P meet at the point R. Find the coordinates of R. So just, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to draw a, a quick sketch, but it's not going to be, of course, I'm not going to draw the sketch of this function because it's 
not an easy one to just draw off the top of your head. Okay, so I'm just going to draw uh, a random kind of shape that's curving. And of course, this is not actually a function because it crosses the y-axis at two points. So it's not actually a function. Okay, it's like, um, we'll learn more about functions. Actually, we're T4, yeah, we know about functions now. So it's not actually a function because it's it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So just imagine it goes like this. I'm not 100% I'm not sure how it goes, but that's the origin. And just say that's the point P, just say for argument's sake. Now, if I draw a tangent to the curve at the origin, and a tangent, whoops, that's not the tangent, a tangent to the curve at the origin, and a tangent to the curve at P, they will meet at a certain point, which is R. Okay, so I've just drawn it randomly. So of course, R might be somewhere else depending on where, because P might be down here or whatever. It might curve that way, might be over here, R, we don't know. I'm just drawing a random diagram just to get the idea that we need to find the tangent of the curve at this point and this point, and then see where those two tangents intersect. So for sure, we have to find the tangent at the origin, and we need to find the tangent at the point P. Okay, so the origin has coordinates 0, 0, and P have the co has the coordinates 0, and let's just call it YP, the Y coordinate of P, All right? So I need to know the coordinates of these two points. I also need to know the gradient of the tangents at these two points. So I need to know the gradient of the curve at those two points because the tangent shares the gradient of a curve at the point at which it's a tangent. So once I found those things, I can use uh, the fact that these are straight lines. If I know the gradient of a straight line, I know a point that it passes through, then I can find the equation of the straight line. Once I have the equation of this line and that line, I can then find where they intersect by solving them to equations simultaneously. Okay, so now, first step I'm going to do is to find the y coordinate of p. Now we know at p, we know that x equals 0 because it's on the y axis. Everywhere on the y axis, x equals 0. And I know that uh, you've got y squared equals y times e to the power of minus 2x minus 3x is the equation of our curve. So if I substitute x equals 0 into this equation, I should find out what y is. So when x equals 0, I've got y squared equals uh, y times e to the power of 0 minus 3 times 0. So I left with y squared equals y times 1 e to the power of 0. Remember, is equal to 1. Anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So I'm left with y squared equals y. Um, I bring them both on the same side of the equation. So y squared minus y equals 0. So y times y minus 1 equals 0. So the two points where it crosses the y-axis is y equals 0 and y equals 1. So this one we know already, y equals 0 on the origin. So this is the one for point P. So point P, the coordinates are 0, 1. Now we need to know, we need to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve, okay, at P and at O. Let's start at O. At O, we need to find the gradient of the tangent. So first of all, to find the gradient of the tangent, let's first... We need to know what the gradient function is. And we know what the gradient function is. It's dy dx. dy dx is 2 times, as we found and we were told actually, 2 times y e to the power of minus 2x. Um, it was uh, plus 3 divided by, you have here, e to the power of minus 2x minus 2y. So you have e to the power of minus 2x minus 2y. So when x equals 0 and when y equals 1, which is where p is, then we can say dy dx is equal to 2 times 1, um, e to the power of 0 plus 3 over e to the power of 0 minus 2. Okay, so e to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so that's 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 5, which is, plus 3, sorry, which is 5, divided by minus, 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. So the gradient of the tangent at P is equal to negative 5. And for the origin, which is 0, 0, whoops, what am I doing? The origin, which is 0, 0, that's for the origin. We have, of course, x equals 0 and y equals 0. So dy dx 
is equal to 2 times 0 times e to the power of 0 plus 3 over e to the power of 0 minus 2 times 0. Well, that gives you 0 plus 3, which is 3, over 1 minus 0, which is 1. So therefore, we can say that the gradient of the tangent at O is equal to 3. Okay, so now we can say the tangent at P and the tangent at O. Okay, so we have for P, we have the coordinates of P are 0, 1. And the gradient of the tangent at P is equal to minus 5. So y minus 1 equals the gradient, which is minus 5 times x minus 0. Okay, that's the gradient of the tangent. Oh, is it? We're talking about tangents or normals? Yes, tangents. Okay, so, the, so that's going to be y minus 1 equals minus 5x. So y is equal to minus 5x plus 1. That's the equation of the tangent at P. And for 0 at O, you've got the coordinates of O, of course, are 0, 0, and the gradient of the tangent at O is equal to 3. Therefore, y is equal to 3x, basically. It goes to the origin, y equals 3x plus 0. So there we have the um, equation of the tangent at, at O. So these two tangents will intersect Okay, so we have to solve them simultaneously. Where do they intersect? Well, we can use substitution. I can substitute instead of y, 3x. So I have 3x equals minus 5x plus 1. Add 5x to both sides. 8x equals 1. So x equals 1 over 8. x equals 1 over 8. All right, and then the y coordinate um, is going to be, we can say y equals 3x. So y is equal to 3 times 1 over 8, which is 3 over 8. So we can say the coordinates of the point R, which is where they intersect. Was it called R? Yes, the point, coordinates of point R are going to be the x-coordinate is 1 over 8, and the y-coordinate is 3 over 8. And there we have the answer to this question, part B of question number 5. So other questions you might want to watch from this video, from this uh, past paper of June 2021, uh, you can find them collected in the playlist, which should appear in this area. Other questions on implicit differentiation and its applications in general differentiation, you can find in this playlist that should appear in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Other questions that you might want to watch, which um, are from P1, P2, P3, P, uh, sorry, M1, S1, even IGCSE um, level questions, you can find um, in the description of the playlist, you'll find some links to material of that sort. So thank you for watching and see you soon.